thought it'd be quite a nice exercise today to paint using just three colours. I'm going to start by wetting the paper all over, just using a large brush, completely covering it. It's quite wet, but I'll allow that to soak in, which will leave the paper damp for a wash and just get some nice soft diffused edges. Kind of similar to the controlled wash method, which I'll explain in a minute. And before we get started, I'll just talk you through the palette. There's some ultramarine, burnt sienna, and royal sienna. And that's it, just those three. Okay, that's set for a few minutes, and you can see the water's soaked into the paper, but it's still damp. And just damp enough that the paint doesn't flow too much. I don't want it to be running around. And like I said before, it's kind of similar to the controlled wash method, which is in a book by Jack Marriott. It's kind of an approach where you work from start pretty much to finish in one big wet wash. You can set the atmosphere and the light with that first wash and then basically just add in touches of darker colour as you go, still within the same wash. And then once it's dry, just add a few dark areas just to add some form and structure. I started with the sky as usual, keeping it very simple really because the land is going to be quite a lot going on in this one. And it's just very various mixtures of raw sienna, ultramarine, burnt sienna to create greys, blues. And just bring that about a third of the way down. Now mix up a slightly darker grey. That's just with a mixture of all three colours. I'll just put in a distant tree line. Just keeping it very simple, but making sure that I don't make all the trees the same height. Just put a touch of warmth in, just at the bottom of that tree line. That suggests some trees and bushes that are slightly closer. If you want to find out more about this controlled wash method, 
a fantastic book to get is Discovering Watercolour by Jack Marriott. I think it was originally printed in the 70s. You probably pick up second-hand copies on Amazon. I think one of the masters of this technique was the English painter Trevor Chamberlain. Some of his work is absolutely amazing. I'm sure a lot of you already know who he is, but if you don't, definitely check him out. Now you see as I'm coming closer, I'm just mixing up slightly thicker, warmer tones It should just give the impression of perspective or the illusion of perspective I should say. And as it's coming closer still even thicker paint And the nice thing about using just the three colours is it doesn't really seem to matter how you mix them, you'll always get colour harmony. You can experiment with which three colours that you use. I like these three, it's kind of like a modified primary palette in a way. With the burnt sienna and raw sienna acting as the reds and the yellow. The only thing is you can't mix a, a bright green, so if that's what you're after, maybe swap out the raw sienna for cadmium yellow, something like that. coming even closer so it's thicker and darker paint. And the paper's still quite wet at this stage, still fairly damp. So everything is kind of blurring together, creating nice soft edges. Just outlining the edge of a stream there, coming in from the right. Mix up some quite thick, dark paint for the foreground. and just reflect some of the sky down into the water area. The 
it should hopefully look more like water once I reflect into that. I'm going to put some trees in in a sec. Just swap brushes and grab the calligraphy brush. I want the tree trunks to be quite light, so just grab some raw sienna. And then just using the side of the brush, pull that across for some foliage. paper's dried a bit more than I thought it would have done at this stage so there's a few kind of harder edges dry brush type marks forming but I quite like that and a smaller tree just on the right hand side there darker shadowy areas going towards the bottom you can have the light coming in from the right hand side so I make the left hand side of the tree slightly darker Always thinking about the shape of a tree as I go with this. And just have another park going off towards the right. I think there'll be about three or four trees here, just like a small clump of trees. slightly darker paint and just add some shadows to those trunks and a few random branches and let's put a trunk that's in shadow there Again, repeat the shadow on the right. And just bring that across the ground just to create a connection between that and the other trees. If you can see how the wash is drying and everything is kind of softening and diffusing and so when it's fully dry I'll be able to come back in and just add a few simple marks just to define everything.
That's just a little bit of shadow at the base of that tree. And grab quite a strong dark. Just put some shadow in at the bottom of those grasses. And again on the bank there. Just suggest a bit of a reflection of that tree. Just very simply, kind of a blue grey. Again, just darken some of those grass areas. Maybe it's a few reeds. And suggest a bit of a reflection there. It's quite a nice method, this controlled wash technique, really. Just kind of allowing the paint to dry and then working around different areas of the paper and as it becomes drier, you can work back in over the top. And that way you kind of always get a nice soft edge. Just takes a little bit of getting used to for the amount of water that you need on the paper. It's actually a very useful technique for plein air painting. Especially if you haven't got access to a hairdryer. I think I'm happy with that, so I'll just allow that to dry. Okay, so that first wash dry, so pretty much that's the painting finished. But I'll just go into a bit of dark and just strengthen a few areas, just to create a, just a few simple hard edges. And it just adds some definition. And just a bit of dry brush for a bit more foliage on that tree. And just redefine a few simple little branches. And some shadow on the trunks.
Again, just a few simple grasses, or it's just the shadow of them really. Just a tiny bit of texture on that bank there. And just a few sort of really dark areas just in the foreground, just to push everything else back a bit. I think I'll leave it at that. Let's take the tape off and have a quick look. There you go, that's the controlled wash method, as I understand it anyway. Like I said before, if you want to find out more about that, do take a look at uh, Discovering Watercolour by Jack Marriott should be able to find a second hand copy somewhere online. It's well worth a read. Some very interesting techniques in there. I do hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, please drop a comment. Let me know what you thought or if you have any questions. And thanks for watching. See you next week. Bye for now.